without the help of the community and all the people's prayers, there's a little ray of hope after all the injustice that's been done. I'm a little shook up about almost everything around me. After 25 years in prison, everything is new. If it wasn't for the voice of the community, Maxine Waters, uh, T.I., uh, Rick Ross, these people, or a voice of the community, the community around me as a whole, <clears throat> people's prayers and coming together as a voice, I would not be sitting here today. I'd like to thank all those people, you know, the developing options, uh, Eugene Henley, uh, Maxine Waters for taking it and say, okay, yeah, we're gonna look into that. If I didn't have these people, I would not be sitting here today. If you say a person has made a change or a metamorphosis, you can't take an inchworm then turn it to a butterfly and put him back into an inchworm. That's what Nipsey did. He transformed from around there and tried to make the money off his rap albums to help the community, to give back when there was no one giving back. So how can you put a halo and then put horns? He was a young man with an old soul. He knew more than half the people that I've met in prison. He matured faster than a lot of people his age. Can you talk uh, to us about what you were doing at the store that day? Buying the shirt? Because I was going to address someone who just lost their father. The injustice was that corrections should not have taken you back into custody. No, I didn't do anything. I'm a victim. You didn't know that Nipsey Hussle had talked about being involved in Rolling I, I had no idea of any of that. I know they said he was a Rolling Sixties, but that's not what he is now. Today, he's a celebrity. I took a picture with a celebrity. I met him once, took a selfie. They said that's the end thing, take a selfie. <laughs> And I think it's also important to note that, um, you know, and we talked about this a little bit already, that he had no idea that Nipsey would be at the store that day. So um, I know there were initially some reports that uh, he was there to propose business to Nipsey or that it was a, a set up meeting and that that's, it was by chance that Nipsey was at the store that day. No, well, he didn't know I was coming so back to did, that store. Okay, so that's completely false. It is. Okay. Because <clears throat> when I went to the hospital, after the ordeal, I seen somewhere on TMZ they were saying this is. I said, that's that's inaccurate. That's not right. Okay. Yeah, and so that was one of the things. That and that was one of the okay. one of the things that was raised at the hearing is that you know I think that um, Mr. Lathan was probably arrested based on some of the facts that were reported that weren't true. The fact that. Um, you know, they were being called friends, that wasn't accurate. Um, and then also, I don't think it was reported anywhere that this was a happen a happenstance meeting, that Mr. Lathan was near the Marathon store, needed a white shirt, he was going to pay his respects and condolences to a family friend who had just lost his father. Back to square one, we don't know why he was at the Marathon store. Because that was what we thought. Yeah. He was at the Marathon store helping out. Of yeah, I mean, this changed the entire yeah, dialogue. and Mr. Lathan's, I mean, not in a position to, to right. say why he was there. But you were there yeah. just getting a shirt, either from the Marathon or the uh, the other store next next right. to it, right? right. The, the one where they sell the white shirts and what. Got it. Why don't you elaborate on how you're doing physically? I think that's what a lot of a lot of people are, are wanting to know because there's really not much information about um, your medical where you are medically physically. I have a bullet in my back, and a fragment of it is broke off is near my spine. And they say, well, if we will take it out, it's a possibility you could be paralyzed. And it's the went through nerves nerve endings. So now my left side, it's like when your foot goes to sleep, you have to stomp it to wake it and get it back up, but it don't get up, it just stays numb. Now, so do you, and do you think Richards was acting entirely on its own, or was it being urged by LAPD to put some pressure on Mr. Lathan to cooperate and to provide information? Do you think that was a factor? I have no information to, to say that that was a factor. Uh, it would be a total guess. And but we asked Mr. Lathan, was that ever told you 
you know, talk to us, cooperate with us, and we'll we'll talk to your friends at Corrections and take care of that for you. That was never told to me. Sorry. Mr. Latham, with, with Council's permission, could you describe first what went through your heart after you realized that Nipsey Hussle would not survive? How traumatic that was for you? I can't even put that into words. That devastated me. Was it when you were still on the ground that you realized that? Yeah, I couldn't even put it into words. You know, from my injury, and then to see and hear what was going on, that was a lot. What were you guys talking about out there? Just saying hi? Well, he told me that he would have the shirt that I needed next week. And I said, okay, and as I turned, it was all bad. Can you, in your words, describe the injustice you feel has been done to you? Well, <clears throat> the injustice is that's what it means. It's just us. Everybody has done some wrong in their life. No one is perfect. But after you serve your time and you learn better and you do better, you still jeer at and poke that that's him, that's him, that's him right there. That's him what? The guy that got off punishment? Um, do you think that you saw anything suspicious that was going on prior to the shooting? Nipsey had tweeted 30 minutes prior to the shooting that um, okay. uh, he tweeted, having strong enemies is a blessing. Yeah, we have no information on that. And, and even if we did, we wouldn't be able to comment. 